Hey guys, it's Liam from L&J Adventures here and uh, today I'm bringing you a Walt Disney World in Florida tips video. Um, we're going to kind of do a, a series of these videos following on from our trip to Walt Disney World uh, back in springtime this year. Jenny and I um, of course went to uh, both Universal Studios and Walt Disney World uh, for just over two weeks, about 18 nights and uh, now we've kind of got our thoughts together on the trip and uh, over the next few weeks hopefully I'll be bringing you some videos on uh, rides, dining and hotels and today we're going to be talking all things food in Walt Disney World and specifically uh, table service restaurants. So a table service restaurant is basically it's where you kind of get served by um, a waiter, you're sat down at your table, typically an a la carte menu but you do have buffets as well and it's important to note character dining is also considered a table service uh, restaurant as well. Now, we actually went to a lot of table service restaurants. So I've got the list here and it covers a full A4 page. So we, we did certainly experience a lot of table service restaurants. We were very lucky on this previous trip. Um, small disclaimer to you though, you do not have to do a table service restaurant. You, you may be happy even just doing one of your, in your whole trip. Um, we are foodies, so the table service restaurants were a big part of our trip, something we really looked forward to. We saved and saved in order to go to these restaurants. But like I say, if you've either got shorter trip planned or you're doing Disney on a budget, you absolutely do not need to do um, as many table service restaurants as we have. But fortunately, because we've got such a big list, I've been able to narrow it down to a top five, which I, has been difficult. I've had Jenny's help. We sat down, we ran the numbers, we, we discussed it, and we worked out what our top five restaurants, uh, table service restaurants, sorry, in Walt Disney World are. So hopefully it'll give you guys a bit of understanding of kind of what we really really liked what we valued um any negatives any pros about certain restaurants so when you come to plan your uh, Walt Disney World trip coming up soon or in the future uh, hopefully it gives you an idea of some restaurants that might be worth trying out so without further ado let's get into it so coming in at number five, we have Topolino's Terrace. Now we actually ate at Topolino's Terrace for breakfast. It was a character dining experience, one of only two character dinings we did on the whole holiday. And uh, this can be found at the Riviera Resort, which is a deluxe Disney resort, a DVC resort, I believe as well. Um, and I'll get into kind of location in a bit as well in a minute, because the way we're gonna be ranking uh, each of these table service restaurants is we've given, a, we've, eat, we've given each restaurant a score for food, like the quality of food, the range of food, for example, uh, value for money, and then atmosphere slash location. So we've given each of these um, categories a score out of five, and then that will give the restaurant an overall score out of uh, 15, basically. And that's how we've ranked them. A couple of them have got the same scores, but we've kind of just picked, but we'll come on to that in a minute. So Topolino's Terrace, like I say, it's located at the Riviera Resort. Uh, we'll start with food. Um, basically you get, you pay a set price and you get given a menu uh, where you can pick one main plate and then kind of one smaller plate. You also get like a, a pastries basket uh, brought over to you to begin with and you can have your tea and coffee and uh, pog juice I think they have there as well. And uh, yeah, basically the, the pastry basket you just got like, I think there's like a pan of chocolat, that, that style of thing. Um, and it's brought to you in like on like kind of a paint palette style thing, which is quite cool because obviously the, the theme of this restaurant is a bit kind of like artists of like France and Italy, the, the Riviera, so to speak. And uh, of course, like I said, you've got the characters as well who are dressed up as different artists. Mickey, Minnie, Donald and Daisy are there, which is uh, it's really cool. Um, in terms of the food, I had the quiche gruyere, which was really, really good, much better than I expected it to be, actually. Uh, and I say quite fancy for like a Disney breakfast, I have to say. And then I got um, a smaller plate of a, a fruit plate for kind of like a dessert kind of thing, which was really refreshing after the, the quiche gruyere. Uh, as for Jenny, she also had the quiche, I believe, and then had some sort of like smoked salmon dish with cream cheese. May have had a bagel there as well. I can't entirely remember, but I'll put in some footage, obviously, as well in this video so you can see that. So in terms of the food, we really, really did like this. Um, and we actually rated it a 4.5 out of 5 for food at Topolino's Terrace. So I think the, the range is pretty good. I think you're likely to find something on that menu that you like, even if you kind of prefer kind of more standard breakfast dishes. They do have like their... Um, uh, I think they've got like eggs and bacon that you can have there as well. So um, in terms of food, like I said, we ranked that four out of five. Moving on to value then. So Topolino's Terrace is $42 uh, per adult. Um, and this doesn't include drinks or uh, gratuity. So we're just, all of these is just going to be giving you the price for the food element. But remember, you've got to add on gratuity, which is typically 15 to 20%. And then on top of that, uh, obviously any drinks that you want as well. So for example, with breakfast, you might have some kind of breakfast cocktail or you uh, might have some sort of specialty coffee, for example. Um, but this is just the food, $42 per adult and then $27, I believe, per child um, for Topolino's Terrace. And we gave value for money Topolino's Terrace a four out of five. Um, I think that's fair enough. I think um, 
Obviously, you've got to take into the account that you are at a deluxe Disney resort. It's character dining as well. So that's why it's quite a fairly high score for value, because I think, you know, character dining, if you're looking to do character dining, I'd always advise looking at breakfast because it is much cheaper. Uh, and the quality of food is very high as well. Um, so I'd give it a four out of five for its value for money. And then if you're looking at location slash atmosphere, we also gave it a uh, four out of five on that. Um, now, in terms of the location, I think the, the real key selling point for this is it's a great meal to do on the morning of like a Hollywood Studios or an Epcot day because uh, the Riviera Resort is part of the Skyliner circuit. So basically, once you've had your meal, you can jump on the Skyliner and then you can head straight over to Epcot or Hollywood Studios. Now, obviously, it's worth considering if you are driving how you're going to do that because it might be easier just to drive to the hotel and then drive drive over to one of the parks. Um, however, obviously, if you are a Disney guest, especially if you're staying when, like we were at Pop Century at the time, we were able to grab the Skyliner over to the Riviera and we had our breakfast in the morning and then we got our uh, got the Skyliner over to Hollywood Studios, I believe, that morning as well. And it was really convenient for that reason. Also, after your meal, I'd really recommend going out onto the balcony and uh, you've got some brilliant views, especially of like the Caribbean Beach Resort um, and you, it's just some really good photo opportunities up there as well. It's worth bearing in mind, you can also eat Topolino's, uh, uh, Topolino's for dinner at the Riviera Resort but I can't really comment on that because we didn't have it I do believe it's quite pricey though so that's worth uh, bearing in mind so with all that considered Topolino's Terrace got an overall score of 12.5 out of 15 it's pretty good going um, and yeah Topolino's comes in fifth place our fifth best table service restaurant in at fourth place is a uh, buffet style restaurant called Boma, which can be found at Animal Kingdom Lodge Jambo House. Now, uh, we're going to be talking about the dinner at Boma here, but we did also actually eat there for breakfast, which I'd highly recommend as well. Um, it's kind of got your usual breakfast offerings, uh, you know, kind of your bacon, your eggs, uh, like nice carved ham, etc. And they did also do Simba waffles as well as Mickey waffles, which was really cool. Uh, and just to give you prices for the breakfast at Boma at the moment, it's $29 uh, per adult and $17 per child for the breakfast um, at Boma. But like I said, we're going to be talking about the dinner. And once again, we're going to start rate, rating it with food. And we gave it a four out of five for the food at Boma. To be fair, the, like, the variety is brilliant. I think there's every, something there for everyone, even fussy eaters. You've got some more advanced options. You've got, um, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this, tabula, I think it's called, tabule. Um, that was really nice. Really enjoyed that. It's a bit like couscous. They also did have couscous. Good salad offerings there. But then I also at one point had a plate with like steak, chicken, salmon on, for example. Um, it's a really wide range of foods. I had a lamb curry, which I just about squeezed in at the end, which was really nice as well. And then for dessert, um, they do the famous zebra domes. Now, you can actually buy the zebra domes from the quick service at uh, Animal Kingdom Jambo House, which is in uh, called the Mara. Um, but you can also get it as part of this buffet as well. Now, Jenny and I have a phrase now um, where we say we're boma full. That's like the bar now, like that's the, the high bar um, when you're boma full because we were absolutely stuffed and we had to waddle out of this restaurant. Luckily, we were staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge at the time, so it wasn't too far. We had to waddle back up to our room. Um, but there's so much food here and uh, honestly, the variety is brilliant. So food score is pretty high with four out of five. Value for money is actually even higher. I'll give it a 4.5 out of five. So in terms of dinner, it's actually only $49, I say only, but $49 per adult and then $29 per child for dinner at Bowman. Now again, that's not including gratuity um, or drinks. I believe drinks were separate, but it was um, honestly, I think like a really good value meal, $49, given the amount you could have. Like I said, I had steak on my plate. I think I had ribs on my plate, chicken, salmon, had all of the salad options if you're a vegetarian or vegan even. Um, and like I said, the dessert options were brilliant as well. And I think for the Given that you're eating at a deluxe Disney resort, you can literally eat as much as you want. Um, the, the, the setting is pretty good as well. I think with all of that factored in, I think $49 per adult is pretty reasonable by Disney standards. Like I say, all of this is relative to what a Disney price is. Now, you might be thinking $49 for a buffet outside of Disney anyway, you know, that is steep. But like I said, this is what Disney World, everything is at a premium. Everything is going to be a little bit more expensive um, because of the experience. And with that considered, I think it's a pretty good price. And then finally, for location, we're giving Boma a four out of five. Now, we probably would have had this a little bit higher because we were staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge ourselves. So it was very convenient for us. And that's why we ended up eating there uh, for dinner and breakfast. But obviously, not everybody's going to be staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge if you eat at Boma. Um, so for that reason, it's a four out of five. Like I said, if if you even if you're not staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge, you can go there. Anyone can go there. You don't even have to be have Disney Park tickets or be a, a Walt Disney World hotel guest. Um, you can reserve it. Obviously, when you know your your res reservation window, kind of um, how soon you can reserve it will, will be better if you're um, on on property, for example. Um, but anybody can eat at Boma. Um, like I said, four out of five, really, you get, you know, the experience of being at Animal Kingdom Lodge. You can have a little wander around. 
Um, it does have that kind of loud buffet atmosphere. Obviously, it might not be the best choice of place for like a date night kind of style meal because, like I say, you've got people walking past you with plates rattling, but you expect that from a buffet. Um, but overall, the, the atmosphere is pretty nice, and I think that's why uh, 4 out of 5 is, you know, a, a fair enough score. Um, so that gives uh, Boma, if my maths are right, a score of uh, 12.5 out of 15, and that is ex exactly the same as Topolino's. So they are kind of pretty much on par, but we kind of said if we had to pick one of them that we would go back to in future, um, Boma would edge Topolino's Terrace for us, I think. So Boma comes in at fourth place. Now, in at three is a restaurant I'm sure many people have heard of if you watch Disney vlogs or you've done your Disney research already, and that is Ohana. Now, Ohana can be found at the uh, Polynesian Resort, which is another Disney deluxe resort, and uh, this is linked to Magic Kingdom via the monorail. Now, um, first and foremost, Polynesian Resort is a lovely resort. I'd really love to stay there one day. Um, but Ohana is kind of like its, its main restaurant. You can get, again, you can have breakfast or dinner here. Um, I believe they've now brought back the character dining option at breakfast. So uh, I think it's Lilo and Stitch, possibly Mickey as well, but don't quote me on that, um, who you can meet for breakfast. And again, like I said, breakfast is really, it's supposed to be really nice at Ohana. But on this trip, we only had dinner there. So we're going to be focusing on that. So we'll start with the food. And we've given the food for Ohana a score of four out of five. Now, the amount of food, first of all, that you get at Ohana is brilliant. It's basically an endless supply um to a certain extent um they, they bring the food over to you in kind of batches and uh you have kind of like a selection of kind of startery things to begin with so we had these things called pot stickers which i don't know if that is a thing in the uk i've never come across that term before but they're kind of like sort of kind of like dumplings but that's probably not the best way to describe them you just have to try them to know what they are but they are really really nice um so so we had them as part of our starter we had some chicken wings as well um, you got salad, you got some uh, bread. The bread was quite sweet. I wasn't too big a fan of, but the bread was, it was like a, I don't know if it was a coconut bread, something like that. But I wasn't a huge fan of that, to be honest. Um, but like I said, you get salad, you get the pot stickers, you get some chicken wings, and then you get the, the famous Ohana noodles, which everyone goes on about. Um, I was, I was really impressed with the Ohana noodles. They definitely lived up to expectation. And then you get a selection of like chicken, steak, and, uh, shrimp. Now, um, Jenny has like a minor kind of um, seafood or crustacean allergy to, to prawns especially, uh, but they were really good with that. We made that clear to them and they actually brought me my own bowl for, which I couldn't finish. They gave me way too many, um, which was really nice though of them to do that. So they brought over um, some separate for me, so they weren't on kind of Jenny's plate or inter interacting with anything like that. So that was, you know, something to know that was really good. Uh, but the chicken especially, we I actually asked for seconds of the chicken because it was really nice. The steak, I'll be honest, wasn't kind of my kind of thing. I'm not a huge fan of the, the kind of roast beef style thing. It was, it was more like roast beef than like an actual like steak, if that makes any sense. So I wasn't a huge fan of that. But ultimately, the overall food is brilliant. And the uh, Ohana bread pudding that we had for dessert with like a, a caramel sauce, probably my favourite dessert or sweet thing I had in the entire holiday. That for me is what pushed this food score up um, to um, a four out of five. It was absolutely brilliant. Really, both really enjoyed it. We cleared the plate. There was a lot there and we were stuffed, but we still cleared it. So Ohana... Um, for food, we're giving a four out of five. Moving on to value for money. Now, this is $55 per adult. Um, I don't actually have the child's um, uh, cost per to, to hand at the moment. But yeah, $55 per adult for dinner at Ohana, which is at the Polynesian Resort. So we give it a four out of five. I think, again, you've got to factor in that you're in Walt Disney World. It's going to be more expensive. You're in a deluxe Walt Disney World hotel. It's going to be more expensive. So, it, it, you know, $55 per adult. Again, some people might disagree with what we're saying on these prices. It is completely subjective. Jenny and I are foodies. Food's a big part of the holiday to us. And so for that reason, we are obviously going to um, maybe be a bit, you know, more lenient, a bit happy with some of the prices than other people would be. And I completely understand and respect that. But for $55 per adult, I gave it, we gave it a four out of five. Um, I think for the, just for the sheer amount of, Sorry, my camera cut out for a second there. Um, so as I was saying, $55 per adult for Ohana means we give it a four out of five for its overall value, which I think is fair enough. Like all things considered, they do just keep bringing you the food whenever you ask for it, which I think is really cool. Um, and yeah, with all things considered, I think it's a pretty fair price. Moving on to Ohana's strength for me is its location and its atmosphere. We gave it a five out of five for this. Location, I think it's really cool because um, like I said, it is a deluxe uh, at a deluxe resort, the Polynesian, which if you do go here, puts some time aside to check out the resort because it's really chilled, got really nice vibes. Um, but also because it's one of the OG Magic Kingdom monorail resorts, it's very easy to get to the park before or afterwards. So the way we did it, we had a chill pool morning at Animal Kingdom Lodge, I think we were staying at that morning. Then we went over and we ate around 3 p.m. And then we went 
um, got the monorail over to Magic Kingdom for the evening and then just had the evening in the park, which is really nice. Alternatively, you might be having a full day at Magic Kingdom, want to break it up a bit, get, get out of the sun, get out of the crowds and maybe go over there for like an early meal in the evening and go back to the park for the fireworks, something like that. I think the main thing is you don't have to worry about trekking across Walt Disney World with Ubers or um with, uh, you know, with Disney coaches, for example, Disney buses, sorry, or anything like that. It's very easy to get to. The chances are, if you're going to Walt Disney World, you're going to be going to Magic Kingdom. And so you can tie it in with that very easily. Um, also, for that reason, like I said, we didn't have breakfast this time. I did when I was a lot younger, but it's a nice place. You could start your day before Magic Kingdom having a breakfast at Ohana as well. So Ohana comes in at third. It has an overall score of 13, which is, like I said, these restaurants are very close. It's only 0.5 higher than Boma and Topolino's. Um, so yeah, Ohana comes in at third for us. In at two is a restaurant not many of you might have actually heard of. And to be honest, this wasn't one we actually had a dining reservation for going into our holiday. So this is just a, a lesson really that some of the best parts of your holiday can be completely spontaneous. And I think that's maybe what like made us like this restaurant even more. So I'm talking about Three Bridges Bar and Grill, uh, otherwise known as Via del Lago, which is located at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort, which is a moderate um, Disney resort. Now, we were staying at Coronado, so it's worth you know factoring in that it was easy, us, easier for us to get to. I'll, I'll touch on that in the location part of it. Um, but let's start um, ultimately with the food, Three Bridges. Now, Three Bridges is like an, an a la carte menu, so you can just pick and choose. You can you know, do starters, man. It's a fairly small menu, but it's a really nice menu. Um, we gave the food a four out of five here. We started with like uh, these uh, tortilla chips with a uh, manchengo dip, which was so good, really, really nice. We also, we're not, neither of us are big drinkers, but we shared the sangria flight um, there as well, which was really nice to kind of to bring out the different types of sangria. I'm not a sangria expert at all. I think I liked two out of four of them, which was, but they, it was really nice nonetheless. Um, for our mains, I had these like pulled pork tacos, which just, that for me was one of the real factors which made me rate this restaurant so highly. It was so, they were so, so good. And uh, Jenny also had a, um, had a burger, which she said was, was absolutely brilliant. We were stuffed after actually that and we, we couldn't have a dessert. I think they do like churros and things for dessert. Cause like I say, it's got that kind of Latin America, um, feel to it being at Coronado Springs. Um, and overall, I think, yeah, the food was just, it, it, it was, it exceeded our expectations. And I don't really know what we expected going into it. Um, but it exceeded our expectations nonetheless. Now it's worth noting with three bridges, you can't actually, uh, do an advanced dining reservation with it like you would with some of the other restaurants I've mentioned where you can do it uh, 60 days in advance if you are a Disney hotel guest. With Three Bridges, the way we did it, we were at Coronado that day, which because we were staying there, we had a pool day. And after we'd been by the pool, we literally just walked past and we were like, you know, do you want to go there for the evening? It looks quite nice. We wanted to kind of have a nice meal. They've got quite a few restaurants at Coronado. Um, and we just literally put our name down and they said, yeah, come back in an hour or so. So we were able to go back to our room, which wasn't too far, get showered, dressed and um, and head over. And I would say Three Bridges is a really, really nice restaurant for like a date night. I, you know, I'm not speaking on behalf of the Florida locals, but I imagine it's somewhere that, you know, if, if you live locally, it would be a great place to go for a date night or even just with some friends or like a nice family meal. But definitely got those like date night vibes of the fact that we had the Sangria flight and the location, which I'll come on to in a minute as well. Value for money, we've given this a five out of five. Um, obviously, I can't give you the exact um, total. I, I tried to locate it, but I can't give you the exact total of everything we had. Um, but if you look at the menu prices, I think, you know, the whole meal, I believe, came to under $100 for us, which you know, for two people having a starter main and alcohol like in Disney World isn't actually that bad. Um, so it was certainly one of the better value for money um, restaurants. A little shout out as well, I will mention, doesn't come under the value uh, element of it, but the cast member who we had serve us here, um, she was absolutely brilliant. Jamie, I think her name might be. We left a cast compliment for her. She was so good. We were wearing our celebration badges, um, as you can see uh, behind me there, um, to obviously celebrate the engagement on, on the holiday. And uh, she was, you know, absolutely brilliant with that. She brought actually brought us some um, uh, free champagne or Prosecco over, which I, I didn't, you know, we don't expect at all going into the restaurants in Disney World. So that was a really nice touch. Um, so she, yeah, she was a brilliant, brilliant waitress, really, you know, lovely cast member, one of the best cast members we met. So that's worth noting as well. Um, and then finally, just moving on to the location, we've given Three Bridges a four out of five, four, four point five out of five, sorry. Now, the location itself is gorgeous. It's placed in the middle of the lake. It's got, it's called Free Bridges because it's got the Free Bridges connecting it, um, to the outskirts of Coronado, but it's based in like the middle of the lake. And if you get the right seat, we were sat more in the middle, but if you sat by the side, you'd be right by the water and you'd have these stunning views of Grandestino Tower, which is like the main lobby part of, of Coronado Springs now. 
that for me was one of the real big factors as well. Again, why I would say it is like a date night kind of restaurant because it's so chill, it's so calm. Um, unlike some other restaurants we went to, I didn't mention it, and this is at Be Our Guest, which we did really like, but we felt quite rushed there because it's in a park and they got a massive turnover. Because Three Bridges, it feels like a bit of a hidden gem. And I think for that reason, they you know, they don't try and throw you out. You know, we were given plenty of time to just enjoy the meal, enjoy the atmosphere. There was no feeling like we were getting pushed out for the next people to come in. And I think that really played a part in the overall atmosphere. So for atmosphere, it would, it would have been a five out of five. We had to dock it like half a point because of its location. It's not ideal if you're not staying at Coronado Springs, because, of course, there is that element of you might have to come over and book it an hour before your table, which... You know, time is precious in Disney World on a Disney holiday. You don't want to be having to wait around for too long. But I suppose my recommendation would be if you were to come here, maybe go over there earlier in the afternoon, say half four or five, something like that. Don't actually know the exact opening times, but I'd say around that time, go over to the person at the front. They'll have like their laptop or whatever. And, um, you know, put your name down, just, you know, say, can we, can we eat here? You know, we, we want to come back and, and eat here in an hour or so. Can we book our, book a table? And they should put your name down and it should be about an hour's wait. Now that's obviously not guaranteed. It depends how busy it is. You could then maybe go and, you know, browse the shop, have a look around the resort. Obviously you can't use a pool if you're not a Coronado hotel guest, but you could go and grab a drink in one of the bars or the lounges, uh, and then go back over afterwards. I, I do really think it was that good that even if you're not staying there, it is worth the journey either by bus or Uber to get there 100% or, or by car, of course. So yeah, in second place is uh, Three Bridges at Coronado Springs. Now the restaurant that comes in first place probably isn't a surprise to any of you who watched our uh, Florida 2022 vlog series because uh, this is the restaurant where I proposed to Jenny um, on our first night at Walt Disney World, the first dis part of the Disney part of our uh, trip and this is California Grill at Disney's Contemporary Resort which again is a, a di deluxe Disney resort also got DVC rooms there because of Bay Lake Tower um, and yeah it was an absolutely incredible experience so there may be a little bit of bias because of obviously what happened um, at California Grill for the two of us but also I think before I'd even proposed Jenny had said she felt like it was one of the nicest restaurants she'd been to I would not change anything about the whole proposal and the fact that I did it there which is interesting because that wasn't actually going to be um, where I was originally planning to propose. Um, I was considering the Polynesian Resort. So as it panned out, it was absolutely perfect and I wouldn't change anything about it. Just an absolutely brilliant restaurant. We wouldn't have any other in first spot. Um, we'll start then with the food. And this was just a simple five out of five. Really cool, actually. And this isn't because I proposed or anything. They're giving this out to every guest, I believe, at the moment for the 50th. Um we got given like a souvenir menu um, from California Grill. Um, and like I say, this is because they're celebrating their, you know, Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary it is an original resort. Um, and this is their 50th anniversary menu. So I can tell you exactly what we had um, from this um, in terms of the food. We both had, um, actually, first of all, they had their, they brought us a bread service, which was this gorgeous, like, warm focaccia um, bread. Like, you can probably tell I'm a foodie. Um, gorgeous focaccia bread with, like, this olive oil and stuff. That was really nice. We actually had that just before I proposed. And then I, I, we had our drinks, and they were, like, very quick to bring over some champagne for us, which I thought was, you know, a really nice touch. Again, not expected. Um, and the rest, the restaurant themselves, like, they were all really brilliant about it. A bit more on that in a moment. But in terms of the food, so we had our bread service. For starter, we both got the braised beef short rib wontons, which had like a miso cola onion sauce with it. Really nice. Jenny was crying while she was eating hers, so I don't think uh, maybe she fully appreciated them as they were, but they, they were a really nice starter, actually. Really enjoyed them. We both got the oak-fired filet of beef for our, uh, for our main course, which uh, came with brown butter, chateau potatoes, cauliflower, golden raisins vinaigrette, and roasted tomato butter. Really, really nice steak. Really enjoyed that. And then for a dessert, I got the five magical bites, 50 years in the making, which is kind of like you get one of each, or one of five different desserts from like, um, from California Grill over the years throughout the 50 years of Walt Disney World being open. And, uh, Jenny got the iridescent grand Marnier creme brulee. Uh, all three courses were fantastic. Like this felt like a, a fine dining experience, if you know what I mean. It was just really impressive. Everything was just spot on with the food could not fault it at all and, and for that reason it has to be a five out of five um moving on then to the value for money we've given the value for money a 4.5 out of five now don't get me wrong it, it is pricey at california grill um i think the total cost of the meal came to 89 dollars per person for adult i think it's 39 dollars per child and for that like i say you get to pick one starter or one appetizer 
one entree or main, and then one of your uh, desserts. They call them market inspirations, chef journey, and sweet creations. You can also add a signature wine pairing for $39, I believe, extra, and then a deluxe wine pairing for $69. We didn't go for that. We both had a cocktail, I think, um, on this night. And of course, we had our, our fizz that they gave us for our, um, for our celebration. Now, I think the, the price obviously is, is steep. It is one of the most expensive restaurants in Walt Disney World. But for me, it was worth it. Maybe that's because it was a proposal dinner and that's the kind of occasion where you expect to spend a little more. I, I'm not sure. But I think if even if I even taking that out of the equation, I'm trying to be as honest as I can. I think if we had those three courses with the location, which, again, I'll come on to in a second. For me, the value for money is still pretty high and I give it four point five um, out of five for that reason. Um, and then going on to location, it has to again be a five out of five location and atmosphere. The restaurant was so friendly and so accommodating with the whole, um, uh, whole engagement. You know, we had, like I said, somebody come up in a matter of moments with champagne. Um, our waiter was, uh, he said, Oh, you know, I missed it. I was in the back kitchen. He congratulations. We got congratulated multiple times. Um, it really made a difference as well. The actual people who were dining there were really friendly. We had one person actually take the photo of the moment that I'd asked Jenny, which was really sweet and, you know, just uh, made the whole experience even better. Um, the atmosphere of the restaurant was brilliant, but the location is superb. We were sat right by the window again. Got very lucky on this night with the, how the whole situation panned out. And we were sat right by the window and we could see, um, you know, some of the Magic Kingdom resorts. We could see Seven Seas Lagoon, I believe it's called, and the castle as well, and, and uh, Space Mountain from where we were sat. Now, obviously, it's worth noting you won't get that exact view from everywhere in the restaurant because it is quite big. But if you can get a window seat, then really do, because it just is it's so beautiful. Like the views you get with, you know, the sun was going, you know, kind of starting to set a little bit. We could see across the lake. We could see the Disney resorts. Again, I'll put in footage of that, I'm sure. Um, but it's just a, you know, real, like I said, it, it is fancy, but not pretentious. I think that's the way I would probably describe California Grill. And it is a must do. We probably won't rush back anytime soon because of the memory we've got of it. And obviously you do have that little bit of fear of, is it going to be as good as it was before? You know, this is where we got engaged. And But quite frankly, I could never go back here again. And it's still probably my all-time favorite Walt Disney World restaurant. That's the best thing I can say about California Grill. Um, this 50th menu, obviously, they, they change their menu frequently, as all restaurants do in Walt Disney World. So um, depending on when you're going, um, if you're going after the 50th anniversary has run its course, which I think is after March next year, then this menu may have completely changed. I, I don't know. But for the qu the quality of food... The overall location and atmosphere, I think it's an absolutely terrific must-do restaurant for a date night or you can have a family meal. Like I say, it's not pretentious, but it is classy. There is a slight dress code, but it's not. It's nothing too bad. I think I kind of, I wore similar to what I'm wearing now, I believe. I wore, I wore like a short shirt and uh, sort of chino style trousers and that was absolutely fine. So yeah, California Grill is our number one table service restaurant at Walt Disney World. So to look at our overall scores then, we've got uh, Topolino's Terrace in fifth place, Boma in fourth place, Ohana in third, Three Bridges in second, and then with a score of 14.5 out of 15, it's California Grill in first spot. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like I say, do not feel that you have to do any table service restaurants on your Disney World trip. You really don't. But if you are foodies, if that's a big part of your holiday, I definitely recommend trying to squeeze in a few if you can. Or even if that is the main part of your holiday and you want to do one every day, that's fine too. Obviously, there's no right or wrong way to do a Walt Disney World holiday. For us, table service restaurants were brilliant. They added a lot to the trip. Character dining especially is really worth looking into. But And like I said, we we you know we, we went to loads. A special mention actually in this video as well to La Cellier, which only just missed out on this top five. It was really difficult not to include that in there, but we had to take everything into consideration. I think it was really the value for money maybe that knocked that down a bit. But the food there was on par with California Grill. Um, and obviously it is in Epcot as well, which makes it a bit harder to have like a nice kind of date night style meal, if that makes sense. You're, if you're doing it at the end of a park day, you're going to be very sweaty and it's not ideal. But yeah, I'd say every, every table service restaurant we went to was brilliant. I, I didn't have one bad experience at a table service restaurant in Walt Disney World. But there are top five. Like I say, you might agree, you might not agree. Um, let us know in the comments if there's any others that you liked, if you kind of agree with anything we said in those top five, disagree maybe. And uh, also just, you know, we're, we're still we're a very small channel. We're just starting out. We've only done one vlog series. So just to let me know of any kind of other, you know, episodes or um, videos you'd like to see, uh, just please let us know in the comments below. And we do have hopefully a uh, shorter domestic based vlog series coming your way soon. And uh, yeah, we'll have some announcements for some trips happening next year as well, which are uh, Disney themed. So thanks for watching along. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you later.